This is in the house. Doug Cutting Doug in Cutting. the house. Right. All right. right. Okay. Hi, right, Doug. How you doing? Has he been through Good. surgery Good. a few times? Uh, the original Hadoop. I don't know if he's been through a lot of surgery. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting his share of abuse before I, uh, I rescued him. The, we'll the, make room the for toilet you paper the canister. Right there, the sock drawer. Move him up right there. Perfect. Oh. Close to the mic. So we'll take a little snooze. Okay, Welcome Doug. back to the Cube, Doug. You're a, you're a Cube alum. You were at, at the Cloud Era offices. You were on the Cube, and we, I don't think we were live that day, but now you're live. No, we so. were not live that day. So the, welcome. Welcome Thank to you. in your inside the Cube, where we want to extract some knowledge out of your head and and uh, and, and and share with the folks out there. I do movement. The it's cube. officially it's officially this, a movement. This is a Cube. This is called the Cube. Okay. Virtual cube. You can't see behind those cameras, but it's actually <laughs> a virtual cube. Okay. All right. I'm in the cube. And we're broadcasting out to the live to the world, that. live to the world, open source. Um, so just to share with the, the story. There's some folks out there watching who are, are interested in Hadoop, new to Hadoop, and you know, obviously the alpha geeks out there as well. But describe what is Hadoop and how it all started. Uh, well, um, started a long time ago. Uh, I was um, working on a project called Nutch, uh, which was um, uh, trying to, it was sort of an ambitious open source project, trying to build uh, sort of the open source equivalent of what you know Google and, and Yahoo and Bing have, which is a, a web search engine that crawls and indexes the entire web. Uh, and it was pretty clear you couldn't do that on one machine. Uh, that's, you know, it's uh, lots and lots of <laughs> data. The Little bottleneck there. <laughs> the time we started, we were, we were figuring it was you know in the, a, a billion pages, maybe a couple of billion, uh, and uh, then you know, by the time we got very far along, it was tens to hundred to hundred billion uh, pages of content that you needed to be able to, to collect, um, and uh, and you needed to refresh it pretty regularly, you know, every week or at least every month yeah. or so, because things change. You need to go out and check to see if they've changed. Um, uh, so we figured out a way to do this on a bunch of computers, sort of got the algorithm straight, and um, and we're able to run it on four machines and do a hundred million pages. Um, but it took you know like one guy full time there copying files and shuffling things around between these four machines that were you know, running in parallel. Um, and around this time, uh, Google published some papers about how they were doing this. You know, and they, they, This was just a couple of us working yeah. part time. Um, uh, and the, they had this paper on uh, the Google file system they published first. And we were like, Ooh, that would be handy. That would make us get rid of a lot of the copying Let's if we do had what they one do. file yeah. system. Yeah. Uh, and so we started looking into you know, how we implement something like that um, uh, in Nutch. Um, uh, then a year or so later, they published a paper about this MapReduce system, which um, uh, was a, a way to actually um, uh, process the data that was stored in this distributed system. And we're like, that's exactly what we need. It was a, the same family of algorithms that we were already using, um, but directly supported by the framework and all automated. So that if, if things, if you had, you know, one disk was getting full, you know, some machines crashing, stuff like that, all the stuff that we had to do by hand. Was done automatically for you. Just say go, and then you go have some coffee or go to sleep and go back. What a gift! And you're done. It's yeah. a nice gift. Like, that's a nice design. Um, so we set about implementing it. This was mostly a, a guy named uh, Mike Caffarella and I, um, and we worked on it for oh, I don't know uh, uh, at least a year, a couple of years maybe, um, and we got to the point where it was running, you know, on um, 20 machines, and it would you know would run along, and it were you know it wasn't perfect, but it was a, it was a heck of a lot better than doing it all by hand, um, and it became clear that um, we weren't going to get to running on thousands of machines uh, without a lot of work. That, that, that it's a tricky um, uh, kind of programming to do uh, and build something that, that will do this reliably and, and you know, run you know all day and, and, and not not die and not need any any babysitting. Um, so uh, we um, around that time. Uh, Yahoo came and talked to me, and Yahoo said, "You know, we we need something like and this." And was Amr Amr was there at the time? Um, uh, it was um, uh, Eric Fourteen, who's a, uh, Eric Waldeschweiler, who's a, a manager of the group there, um, was the person I talked to. Um, also, my uh, the, the person I ended up working for was a guy named Rami Stada, who's now the uh, CTO, I believe, of Yahoo. Um, uh, and they were interested in in this kind of technology, um, uh, and. Um, and they had a team of people they wanted to apply to it. And I was like, well, that's, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a gift, too. Yeah, yeah and so I was like, gift. okay, I'll come work with you because uh, we, we need to do this. And, but they weren't interested, at Yahoo, in the, the, a lot of the um, parts that were search specific because they already had all that. Um, and they didn't want to replace any of that. They just wanted the stuff that did the distributed file system and the MapReduce part. Um, so we split that out into a new project. And, uh, and called it Hadoop, and I'd, I'd had the, the the name sitting in my in my pocket there, waiting for the 
the next open source project that I was going to do. I'd, uh, I'd, when my son had coined it to name this, this guy, I, uh, I said, ooh, that, so that'd be a... This is the original Hadoop right here. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I... I uh, I, when when my, my son named his elephant that, I thought, well, that would be a good project name. It's a it's a short word. It's easy to pronounce, um, uh, and it doesn't mean anything. So we're um, now for a good name. Now, how did he come up with the name? It just sort of popped into his head. Just this was his little imaginary friend. As far as I know, yes. kind of looks he's, like a Hadoop. He's never been able to explain it. Uh, he's ten now, but he was only about two at the time uh, that he, that he coined the name. Um, he was he was two at the time. Yeah, I think I think around two. Precocious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is he writing code at that age too? Or? Um, not then. He does a little now. Yeah. Went to a programming summer camp this last summer. Awesome. Uh, enjoyed that. Uh, so he'll, he'll. I don't know. Get the photo Who knows? Whatever, yeah, whatever he's into. Right. Uh, Good deal. Um, but uh, so we. Um, I also like that th there was an obvious mascot um, for the for the name. You know, for the for the name. Got to have a mascot. The yellow elephant. Right. I mean, you know, that's perfect. <laughs> you know, we we need that. We need the logo. Uh, we need the mascot. Um, uh, so we split that. Oh technology, the distributed file system, and the MapReduce out of Nutch started this new project, a new Apache project um, called Hadoop, um, and um, uh, set, set going on that, and uh, brought on you know, uh, more developers. Um, Owen O'Malley was one of the first people. Um, uh, Tom White, Owen O'Malley's at Yahoo. Tom White, who was independent at the time, now is at Cloudera. Um, a lot of people joined. Uh, Arun Murphy, who's, who's at Yahoo, is here today. Um, uh, more and more people were, were joining. Hello. <laughs> so congratulations. Uh, I mean, look, I mean, like the proud papa here. But really, in reality, this movement is going mainstream. And it's exciting. I mean, you, how do you feel? <laughs> it's a little yeah. unbelievable. It's, it's not nothing really that I would have ever be. predicted. Uh, I mean, from from my point of view, I was interested in you know uh, building web search, uh, you know, and, and uh, the the technologies you needed to support that. But I think there's kind of a, a moral to there in that. Um, I started with this one application in mind, and so this is a general purpose tool to help me build that, that kind of application. Um, and I think that's the way a lot of people get started using Hadoop, is they, they have this one problem, and they have a huge amount of data, and it's a critical problem. They say, okay, we're going to invest, we're going to get this big thing, we've got this general purpose technology, which will make our life a lot easier. And they get it in there, and then they start finding all these other problems. Oh, you know, since we have all the data there, I wonder if we can load this other it's data set in. organically and within the big companies. Yes, yes, and, you, and they we're start solving all kinds of problems. Um, that they hadn't realized that they were even really having. Um, so, so yeah, I like, hope you take this survey next year. Uh, did you take the survey last year? You know? Did I take the survey? No, no, no did the did, 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 oh. did, did Hadoop World 09, did you guys do the survey or no? You know? I did don't you know. see the survey you guys did? No. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but, so, uh, so, uh, Mike uh, mentioned it, but I just, I'm interested in how fast it's going to grow because it's exploding, right? It's definitely exploding. The average, uh, I think it was 115 terabytes was the average yeah. instance. Yeah. Right? I mean, Five years from now, what's that going to look yeah. like? Right? I mean, a lot of it is driven by the hardware economies. Hardware has gotten so so cheap, uh, and in some ways, it's it's you know it's about time that the the software caught up where you could really um, uh, you know use all that hardware. You know, use the hardware you can afford to buy um, to effectively process uh, your data. You've got you know if you can afford to buy a thousand processors, wouldn't it be nice if you could run them all together on yeah. all your data? And and before that was that was pretty hard to do yeah. to really use all that power. The right. the, uh, my, your, the CEO of Cloudera, Mike Olson, was saying uh, on stage. He mentions the word proprietary vendors. How's he talking about the, you know, the guys in the marketplace? But he talks about the concept of. Um, your data will always live because no matter what happens, here's the source code. I've heard you talk in, in our in our office, your office, in, in our Silicon Angles office, which is in Palo Alto, with uh, our director Michael Sean Wright mm -hmm. privately about uh, some experiences you've had, where you've written some code and the company has gone under right. and your code dies. Yeah, no, so, no, I've, so, so I worked at Excite and uh, the company I was probably talking about, uh, which went bankrupt in around 2000. Uh, and I have no idea what happened to that software. There was a lot of there were a lot of smart people at Excite, Great a lot stuff, of neat right? software written, and poof. Yeah, as far I'm as sure, I know, it's know, disappeared got, into some. You, you got paid for it, but in reality, code is like a baby, right? You you've done a lot of good work, and now right. your work, your yeah. art, right. is gone. It's like right. almost a, a heist, almost, right? right? Well, so, and the other thing is, is that um, because so many people get to use open source software, um, it gets to be a huge success. I mean, I, I mean, I think there's been lots of software written uh, that's that's not open source, that's every bit as good. As you know, the open source projects that are that are out there, but not everybody gets to use them, and so they don't get this groundswell of developers, groundswell of users, uh, and they don't have these explosions. Um, uh, so I, I mean, I think um, open source is 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 a real secret sauce to success so here. It, open source is also maturing too. I mean, I remember we were just talking to Mike. I mean, now we're all kind of the same age, and we've seen you know Gen One 
and there's a lot of religion in open source, like, you know, and you're for profit. But now it's becoming acceptable, right? I'd say in this third generation, say it's third generation open source, it's growing. And Apache's been around for, for a long time, it's been very successful. Um, it's changing, so how's the community changing? I mean, there's pretty much a mindset of commercialization is okay, there's some proof points of, of use cases where it's worked out, and there's some where it hasn't. Uh, how is the community evolving to the new open source, what I saw balance between the benefit of a rising tide for the yeah. right reasons, because there's always the right reason and the wrong reasons, it's always good and bad, but how is this, the community evolving? Because there's more well, opportunities now. I mean, Apache's historically and, and continues to have a, a very liberal idea of open source, which is that you know, the, the Apache license um, lets people pretty much do what they want with the software. We, we're not trying to um, uh, force people's uh, what what they can and can't do with, with software. Not just free of charge, but freedom. To, for well, it, people use that word in different ways. It's so I'm gonna. <laughs> it's, it's an implicit contract, uh, right? Um, in, in a way, there's like an implicit. Well, there, we're, we're, we don't require that anybody that people give things back if they change it. We understand people might want to change things oh, and not give saying, it back, right? and, okay. that, and that's fine. Uh, you know, it's the the important thing is that you have a community that's collaborating. Um, and it's in their interest, I think usually, to give changes they make back to, so that the community can help maintain it. But if they have something they want to do and they want to sell it, that's fine. Um, okay. I mean, there, one and area they, that we run into- they have to support that. The yeah, community yeah. won't support a non uh, yeah, right. right. Um, the one area where we sometimes run into conflict is, is trademarks, um, where we, we don't want there to be confusion. You know, what is Hadoop? Is it, you know, and, and you want it to be one thing. You don't want it to be there a lot of confusion. And, and so the Apache Software Foundation says, you know, we own the name Hadoop, and we get to control what you can call Hadoop and have rules around, around that. Um, but anybody could take it and call it something else and do whatever they want with it. The code itself isn't, isn't you know, we're not proprietary about it. Um, so that's, a, that's sort of the Yeah, the okay, line so you drawn. don't want to fork the code base. Well, you can fork it. You can well, fork you can, it. Just, but you won't it would be confusing the, to have two forks called yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, yeah, uh, you, you could even right. fork it within Apache as long as you, you know, one as of the forks would don't. have to change its name. Yeah, call it yeah. Apache. Yeah. And, <laughs> then you might and have and some It's a sales job, too, at that point. I mean, forking is a nice little... You know, checks and balances. If there's momentum, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a vote. Vote well, with your code. Right? I mean, if, if the community, you know, has uh, it's become stagnated somehow, um, then we want people to have the freedom to go and, and fork it and, and say, you know, we're going to do something new and call it Bleeblop, and uh, and it's better than Hadoop, and you know, and it's compatible and so on, and that, that'd be great. That's so, fine. Doug, so, Doug, how do you spend your time these days? I mean, what's your what's your focus? Um, these days, I'm mostly working on a project called Avro. Uh, when I when I manage to you know sit down and write code. Um, which is not as much as I'd like, uh, um, uh, which is trying to establish a, um, a standard uh, data uh, representation um, uh, for, um, for, for example, data files um, uh, that people can interchange, um, uh, read and write from different programming languages um, that's, that's fairly rich. I mean, today the, the real sort of de facto standard data format is, you know, CSV, uh, common, common separated values or, or tab separated values and, and things like that, which are pretty poor. Um, uh, so trying to build build a layer that um, works well uh, within for the, the wide spectrum of, of Hadoop uh, applications and the, and the Hadoop family applications. Which ultimately seeing. leads to greater adoption. Okay, um, so. Uh, so I spent a fair amount of time on that. I spent some time I'm uh, working with uh, the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, I'm on the board of directors. I'm actually the, the chair of the board of directors uh, this year. Um, and so that takes a little time, uh, you know, get ready for the meetings and, and try to, you know, put the agenda together and, you know, it's, Sort of, uh, I'm, I'm given back in my own way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, and then, you know, I spend time talking to people about Hadoop and uh, about other things. Um, so I, I split my time among, among those. But I still, you know, try to spend, you know, at least a, a third or, you know, ideally half of my time coding. Ready code. Uh, yeah, which uh, I, I, I not, not ready to give up yet. Well, we want to recruit you for our open source project, a storage back end for all this HD video we're trying to uh, yeah, we really archive. Need, we we need, really need a good architect yeah, need, to help us out here. We need so. a good architect, so well, thanks for volunteering. Talk, talk to Mike. We really appreciate your time <laughs> donating to SiliconANGLE oh, TV's back end. Uh, we'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> Doug Cutting, the founder of Hadoop, and we're excited to have him here because not only is he a great guy, really believes in open source, gives back, creator of Hadoop, recruited a team, commercialized it, now part of Cloudera's team, uh, and built this entire uh, uh, universe, this movement, um, with his friends. And this has now evolved into a full-on movement. Congratulations on all your success and, Thank and you. collaboration. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for coming inside oh, the yeah. cube. Thanks for having me. Thanks, uh, is that okay if I take the guy with me sure, here? Sure, sure. Thanks for bringing him. Doug Cutting. <laughs>